Good morning, uh, saints and beloved of God. It is uh, a privilege again to see you this morning. Uh, this is uh, day two of our series uh, of morning devotions that are talking about uh, the promised Holy Spirit. Yesterday, uh, we began talking about uh, uh, the, the introduction. And we talked and we said that it is without great controversy that the mystery of godliness is, is, is great and that God was manifested in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He is seen of angels. He was preached upon unto uh, the, 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 the Gentiles and that he was believed on in the world and received up into glory. This God we're talking about, we're talking about the mystery. Yesterday we talked about the mystery of godliness. We talked about the controversy that normally surrounds this uh, personhood of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, the entire Trinity. We talked about uh, introducing the Holy Spirit as not just an it, not just a, a, a another wind or, or, or so to, to be, but we said that he is a person. We said he's a person who feels, who thinks. We say that he is a person, complete person of the of, of, of the Trinity. Uh, Elohim, if you can remember, we talked about Elohim uh, being the plurality of the Godhead, more than one, more than two, actually three and above in the Hebrew means is, is, is Elohim. And so God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit together are functioning. And that God has given us the Holy Spirit uh, as a helper. He's given us the Holy Spirit uh, to be with us. He's given us the Holy Spirit uh, to teach, to help us, and to gather us, and to take us into a place of promise. Today, we want to look at uh, the next in, in, in this series of the promise Holy Spirit. We want to go into the scriptures. We want to look at what the scriptures say. And today we actually want to focus on the Old Testament. We want to look at the Old Testament scriptures and dig into the Old Testament scriptures and see uh, what, 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 what kind of gold we can dig up this morning about this that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Um, when we want to start by looking at Ezekiel chapter number 36. Ezekiel 36 and verse 26 and 7. And I will read for you, Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27 says this, For I will take you from the nations. I will gather you from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Then, verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. This is uh, the prophet Ezekiel speaking to the nation of Israel, and he's talking uh, prophetically, because the prophecy is not only for that particular uh, time, but the prophecy speaks even into our season and into our time. And God was setting about something here. He was saying that there was a system. If you look at this scripture, there is a system through which God is going to bring us into this that is called uh, a new spirit. Firstly, in verse number 25 of Ezekiel 36, he says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. It is speaking about salvation. It is salvation first. You need to be saved first. I will sprinkle clean water on you. You will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. When that has happened, when he has given us, he has, we have come into salvation. This is what the Bible says. Then I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. It talks about the promise of the spirit. Yes, that we come into salvation and then God will give us a new heart and will put a new spirit inside of us. He will remove the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. And verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Already we are seeing the benefits uh, of, of, of having the spirit because the spirit 
causes us to walk in the statutes of the Lord, causes us to observe carefully the ordinances of God. If at all we are a people who want to walk in the ways of God, this is the thing. We need the Holy Spirit. And the Lord has told us, even as he prophesied through the prophet Ezekiel, that he will sprinkle clean water on us. And number two, he will put a new spirit within us. When he says a new spirit, it means that there was another spirit. A new spirit. A new spirit comes upon us. This new spirit is a, is, 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 is a revival of the spirit that God had given to man in the beginning. We were dead. Yet, God is saying that he can make us alive. He can put a new spirit in us. So there's a promise of, of, of the spirit of God that after salvation, as we are going through this that is called salvation, after we have been sprinkled clean with water, ah, then he puts this new spirit inside of us and we become a new creature. The Bible says a new creature. Look, we're looking at the Old Testament. The Old Testament, again, we look at the prophet uh, Joel, and the prophet Joel in Joel chapter number 2, verse 28 and 32. Uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to, to 32. This is what it says. It will come about after this. This is Joel prophesying that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. All mankind will have the spirit of God. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and the female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. In those days. Those are future days. And the, the, the prophet Joel is looking at days that were coming, which were days uh, that are called the last days. And we, I believe, uh, possibly in the last generation, uh, in the last days. We are, we are coming into these last days very quickly. I know that our God will not tarry. He is soon to come. And if he is soon to come, then this that is called, the, 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 the prophet Joel prophesied, uh, uh, is happening now. In fact, at the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were out, uh, 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 then they were in the upper room and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, one of the disciples said, hey, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. This is that. I want to tell you that this, what situation and what place that we are in, what season we are in right now, is that that the prophet Joel spoke about. This is the, the, the powerful thing about this is this, that God will pour out his spirit on all mankind. He is not a respecter of persons. And he's saying that the spirit of God will be poured out on all mankind. Listen, he says your sons and daughters will prophesy. It means that there is no gender. There is no gender. Have we had issues with gender? Have we had issues on saying women shall not do this? Oh, it is only for men, yeah, women and the other. Have we had debates? Have we had issues about women in ministry, in churches and doing this? This is what the Bible says. And this is what God is saying through the prophet Joel. That there will be no cause for there to be a gender difference. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. All, all genders, both genders, let me not say all genders, because I know in this day and, and, and age, there's only two genders. Eh? But there we find that there are other genders that are popping up now. No, those are not genders. There's only two genders, male, female. So all and both genders will prophesy. Not only will, will, will genders prophesy, but age groups, all age groups, will also be involved. It says that your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Why? Because of the spirit of God being released upon men. Age groups will not be any more a difference. Have there been issues and times when people have been uh, discounted because of their age? When people are young, oh, you are, this one is so young, is inexperienced. He has seen nothing. Timothy faced the same thing. Uh, uh, Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah, was saying the same thing. I am a young man. Hey, but listen, when the spirit of the Lord comes, as the prophet Joel has prophesied, age does not matter. Experience is nothing if you have the spirit of the Lord with you. Praise the name of Jesus. And God is saying, your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. 
dreams are those things uh, that maybe you may not be present to see. You may not be present in, in when they are coming to pass. They, you know, they, a dream is left on to the next generation to bring and to see. So this one is what the, the old men are talking about. The old men are saying they will dream dreams, they will be seeing things, and they will be bringing up young men and telling them, listen, this is what the Lord is saying, and they are showing us the things that are to come. And as they tell us these things to come, the young men are able to run because they will be able to visualize and run for these things. They can achieve them in their lifetimes. Because visions can be achieved. You can achieve the vision in your lifetimes. Hey, there are men, old men who had dreams. They never saw the Martin Luther King with the famous I have a dream speech. He said that he had been to the mountaintop. He had seen this dream. But again, he said that he may not be present when everybody comes into this particular dream. And I tell you that they're dreams of old men because the spirit is coming upon us. Men are going to be dreaming dreams. Ah, in this congregation of ours, ah, they, they who are listening unto me will be dreaming dreams. There'll be dreams that old men will be dreaming. And uh, the young men will be seeing visions. Age groups will not matter. I say, uh, number one, gender will not matter. Number two, age groups will not necessarily be be the thing that, that divides us. In fact, it will be a unifying factor. As the old men dream dreams, they will pass them on, these dreams, to the young people who will then visualize and run. So, in fact, age groups and age differences are going to be a thing that will be joined together. They will be brought in harmony. No longer will they be sitting apart and separate. Ah, no longer should there be a different things because the Spirit, when the Spirit is present, ah, people hear the word of the Lord. Listen, I have, I have been in many places. Sometimes I have been preaching sermons, preaching sermons, and, and, and sometimes we have preached sermons uh, that seemed perhaps... Uh, for adults, but there were children present in the, in the services. And as, as, as we have called for altar calls, children have come up. They have come up in response to what they heard being spoken. I want to tell you that age shall not matter. Sometimes we are differing and differentiating age groups so much and thinking, oh, this does not work. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the one that unifies. The message will come forth and it will be the message that the old men can hear. It will be a message that young, strong ones can hear. It will be a message that children can also hear. No wonder children were coming to Jesus. Ah, because he had the Spirit. And they would hear him. They would hear him and they would come to him. Listen, the Bible says that age groups shall not matter. Yes, and verse number 29 says this, that even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit. Listen, social standing will not matter. Social standing will not matter. Whether you are slave or whether you are free. Ah, <laughs> when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us, even as the prophet Joel said, social standing does not matter. They who are free, they who are, 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 are the high flyers, you know, the high rollers, those ones who are, have, 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 have castles, uh, they live in castles, and they live in palaces, uh, and those ones who live in rum shackled in, shack, in, 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 in some tin shacks, uh, in wherever it may be in the world, they also, none withstanding, when the spirit falls, they will fall in the palaces as well as in the shacks. It will fall in the places where wherever your social standing is, whatever your background is. No, your background will not be able uh, to stop you from accessing anything in the kingdom of God. Your background is not a disadvantage anymore with the Spirit of God. Ah, when the Spirit of God is, is, it comes upon us, your background shall not hinder you at all. You who never went to school, you who dropped out in school in standard two, or oh, you who went to university and PhD and you have all the, the, all the, the, the degrees in the world. Ah, it is the same Spirit that worketh among all men. And Jesus says, uh, and the Lord says, uh, hey, this is what the scripture says, uh, that even on the male and the female servants, he will pour out his spirit in those days. I am looking forward to those days. I am looking forward to those days. Are you looking forward to those days? Are you looking forward to the day that we shall see the King of glory, that we shall be joined 
no gender, no age group necessarily, uh, social standing, yes, all united to face and to glorify God, the day is coming. And this is what the Old Testament is telling us. The day is coming when the Spirit of the Lord is going to come forth. And you and I have got to look and say, Lord, give me, give me the Spirit. Give me your Spirit, O oh God. Send your Spirit forth upon me. You see, the Old Testament talks about two baptisms. There's two baptisms that I see in the Old Testament. It's two baptisms I see. The Red Sea uh, was a baptism. You see, when the children of Israel, they came out of Israel. When they came out of Israel, they passed through waters. They passed through waters twice. There are two waters, and there are basically two baptisms that, uh, the old, that the Old Testament tells us about. And I want to talk about these ones a little because I know that you and I need to understand this. We had said that the thing that disturbs and disrupts our lives is lack of understanding. So, brethren, we need to pray, and we want to pray now in this direction. We want to pray regarding two things. The first thing is we want to pray regarding the promised land. Uh, and the, and the, the Lord says that the baptism, the second baptism, and this one that is called the Holy Spirit baptism, takes us into the promised land. We want to pray that God may take us into the promised land. O oh God, that you may take us into the land of promise. King of glory, indeed we desire this that is the, the latter rain. We desire this that is the Holy Ghost baptism. Father, that we may come into the promise. That we may come into the land of promise, the things that you have uh, called us to. Lord, this land of promise is a fruitful land that you may cause us to be fruitful in the things that we are doing. You may cause us to be fruitful in our lives. You may cause us to be fruitful in our jobs. You may cause us to be fruitful in the various aspects, whatever we lay our hands to do. Lord, that your Holy Spirit, as you have baptized us, you may cause us to be fruitful, even as Jesus was fruitful after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. We see that his life was able to transform and change many, many lives of those who are around him. Lord, that our lives may become the same as Christ Jesus. Even, th even this effect that the Spirit has upon His life, Lord, that it would have upon our life. That, Father, that we may be translated into the place that You have called us to. You indeed have called us into many places. You have promised us many a thing in our lives. You have promised some of us marriages. You have promised some of us children to raise children. You have promised some of us careers that will be able to bring glory and honor to You. You have promised some of us, uh, oh God, time titles and many, many different things in this life. And Father, we are praying, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may be the power behind us, may be the wind in our sails, may be the one that will be able to direct and guide us even into the land of promise. Father, we know that our land of Canaan is present here. We know that we are able to see things here in the land of the living, that we are able to move and to have effect here in the land of the living. King of glory, that you would cause the Spirit flow in our lives, that they may, they may be a difference in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we want to come into the promise. We want to come into the various things that you have called us to do in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to take this prayer also uh, because people were released. We were released. We were freed for a cause and for a purpose. We were released by God from slavery that we may go and become worshippers of God and that the spirit within us may cause us to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Bible says that God is, can only be worshipped in spirit and in truth. So can we take up this prayer now? We were released from Egypt that we may worship him, that we may glorify him with our lives. Shall we ask him now, Lord, that you may just help us glorify and worship you. Lord, you released us from, uh, from, from, from the chains of darkness. You released us from the chains of the en enemy. Lord, that we may come and we may worship you in spirit and in truth. For you cannot be worshipped unless in spirit. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you may cause our lives to be an instrument and to be vessels of honor, of glory, of power. Oh God, that we may worship you and men around us may see indeed that we are worshipping the God who can 
created the heavens and the earth. Lord, I am praying now in the name of Jesus, oh, that you may send the latter rain. Send the latter rain now upon us. For indeed, even as, your, as, as the prophet Joel has said, oh God, that we know that the latter rain is coming. And even as it comes, that you, it may fill us, Lord, that you may fill us to overflowing, Abba Father. Fill us to overflowing that as we worship you, men and women around the world, men and women around us may know that we are worshiping the great I am, the one who is, who was, who forevermore shall be. Oh, even the lion of the tribe of Judah. Father, we thank you and we worship you. It is with our hands outstretched that we wait for you, O oh God. We wait for your power. We wait for your glory. We wait for you, O oh God. Father, we are, have said that we are going to be tarrying this month. As we tarry in your presence, cause us to be always thinking about you. Cause us to be always walking about and thinking of you, O oh Lord. Father, for as we think about you, as we think about, as we meditate on your word, it comes alive in us, O oh God. Let this word come alive in our hearts, Abba Father. Let this, your word, come alive in our hearts, that this that is the promise may become the truth and the fact of our lives. Father, we give you glory and we give you thanks. We pray now. Let us pray now for that spirit to fall upon every gender, to fall upon every age group, to fall upon the social structure, the, the, the social stratum of our society. Shall we ask now that the spirit would fall not only on ourselves, but on these age groups, on this that is called the genders, on these that are called the social uh, stratification of our, of, our, of, of our society, that the Spirit may fall and unify us all. Father, we are praying now in Jesus' name that the Spirit may fall upon the men, the Spirit may fall upon the women. We are praying now that the Spirit, O oh God, may unify what has been differentiated, may bring us as one, Lord, because you have prayed that your church may be one, O oh Lord. We are praying now that you may join us together. We are praying that even where age groups have been stratified, oh God, that indeed your spirit may join us together, that the old men would lead the young ones, that the old women would lead the young women. Lord, that there may be unity and oneness where the older are seeing dreams, the young ones are running with vision, O oh God. I am praying, O oh Jehovah God, by your spirit, that you pour out your spirit upon the maidens and upon the youth, O oh God. I am praying that you would send your spirit, O oh God, that Lord, what these things that we see happening, the pregnancies, the teenage pregnancies, what we see happening around us, Abba Father, O oh, people being careless and running around and doing things that are, are nasty and ugly, Lord, that they shall be hindered by your spirit. Spirit. We are praying now, oh God, even even for the uh, for, for 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 the social standards and and, and and the rich and the poor. Lord, indeed, your word tells us the rich and the poor will always be with us. But we are saying, oh King of Glory, let your Spirit fall upon even those rich. They that are in the palaces, they that are in the slums, they that have and they that do not have. Lord, let your spirit come and fall upon them, O God. Each and every one of us, Abba Father, for we know that Lazarus did not have but yet went to heaven. We know that the rich man, oh, the rich man who had everything was burning in hell. Father, I pray that now by your spirit that you will cause there to be a oneness, that your spirit may go out and may touch the rich and may touch the poor. Lord, even those ones who seem to have everything, oh, if they don't have you, they have nothing. Pour your spirit out upon the rich. Pour your spirit out upon the poor. Pour your spirit out upon the old. Pour your spirit out upon the young. Pour your spirit out, O oh God, upon the females and the males, O oh Jehovah God. Even in this time when there seems to be discrimination, where the girl child is given much more than even the young boy, and the young boy seems to be alienated, O oh God, send forth your spirit upon the young. Send forth your spirit, your unifying spirit, O oh God. We are praying, Abba Father, that you may do a new thing. Send forth your latter rain. We are crying out, O oh God, for your latter rain. Oh, we are lingering and we are waiting. We are waiting. Blessed are they who wait on the Lord and we will wait upon you. We are hungering and we are thirsting. Oh God, for your spirit, we are poor in the spirit. We are poor in the spirit. Lord, that you may just pour your spirit afresh upon us, oh God. Pour your spirit afresh upon us. We wait on you. We wait on you. 
We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. Listen, the Lord is doing something among us. There is something that He's doing right now in your very heart. You may not even begin to perceive it now, but it shall become evident in your life what the Spirit of God is beginning to do. He is raising up. He is building up. He is doing something in the midst of you that will cause your life to be never the same again. He is raising you and lifting you up. There are some of us here who have been oppressed of the enemy. Your past has always been a hindrance. Where you have come from has always hindered you. God is saying, listen, your past will no longer hinder you. Your background will no longer hinder you. Yes, you have been fearful because of the way that you speak. You have been fearful because of the things that you missed. Some of us went, and I know that many sometimes joke about it. Some went, did not go to high school, did not even go to school. We left in standard two, standard three. Others, you know, you have been so careful in how you talk to people because your accent will betray you, your name betrays you. Things like these have happened and God is saying, listen, it does not matter what your background is. When you have the Spirit of the Lord inside of you, you are able to move forward and God is releasing you from chains. He is releasing you today in Jesus' name. I'm speaking the power of God over you now. I am saying that you can never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord God of glory and His Spirit is coming and the spirit is a spirit of power he's a spirit of power he makes the difference he makes the difference the weight that you have lacked he makes the difference yes the name that that family name that you have lacked he makes the difference now you are in the family of god he makes a difference ah those things that you you feel as though you have lacked yes some of you are feeling that you are not full you're not complete Maybe because you lack a spouse. God is saying, listen, that should not be it. Oh, with Christ and with, with the Holy Spirit, you are complete. Ah, Some of you are saying, until and I get a child is when I will be complete. God is saying, listen, ah, you are, I am the thing that you desire. And if you have me, you have everything. And God is, is going to come through for you. Today is your day. Today is your day. We want to command our morning again this morning. We are saying today, this day, you are going to serve me. This day, the earth and everything in and around will work for me. I'm speaking to you, earth. You shall accept me today in Jesus' name. The works of my hands I am speaking today, they shall be profitable to me in Jesus' name. My relationships I'm speaking to you today, my relationships shall be profitable in Jesus' name on this day. And on this day, I am declaring that you, my God, shall supply my needs according to your glory and your riches in glory. Today, you are supplying my needs in Jesus' name. Yes, daily bread is mine. Daily bread is mine. Today, I'm going to get revelation divine. As I am walking in the streets, as I am do, dealing with my business things, whatever I am doing today, God is going to be speaking into my heart and I'm going to receive revelation. I speak it, I declare it, I decree it in Jesus' name. I will never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. This day, I have decreed it and I have declared it. The Lord has gone before me. The Lord is behind me. He is beside me and He is around me nothing of the enemy shall ever get to me. The fiery darts of the enemy, the weapons that have been fashioned by darkness, they shall not overwhelm me. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Father, even as we have made these declarations, they are going forth and our day is complete and set in you. We say glory, we say honor in Jesus' mighty name. We pray the Lord bless you. Tomorrow, let us meet again as we look at the New Testament, as the New Testament, what the New Testament prophesies and what the New Testament says about the promised Holy Spirit. Stay tuned.